Thank you, thank you, praise and worship team. Thank you for holding on till I return. You had some king's business. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I say it's good to love the Lord. It's good to serve the Lord. It's good to praise the Lord. It's good to worship him. And I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. I'm not ashamed. Some only pretending like they're not ashamed. They're only facilitating and going along with us for what they can get out of it. But there are some who recognize there's something more. Something more to this than just words. Something more to this than just a place and some people singing and praising the Lord. Oh God. And those are the people I'm here for. I don't mind bearing through the wayside. Bearing through the rocky ground. Bearing through the tawny ground. Till I get to some good ground. Because I know some good ground is coming. Long as I keep sowing, good ground will come. And a sower that believes in that will keep sowing till he gets the harvest. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Ah, you may be seated in here. Thank you all for participating in the worship, for allowing the Lord to bring you in further depths of communion and fellowship with him. Hello, somebody. I am not here to waste time. If I didn't believe in this message, I would not be preaching it. I would not give my life to it. I'm one who is very much purpose-oriented. If it doesn't have a true purpose to me, I'm not in it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I believe there's true purpose in this. What you say? Those who know the Lord know the purpose. And those who know the purpose will give all to it. Come on, somebody. And I'm not holding back. These are not the days to be holding back. Looking cute and going on like you all are that when you're nothing. Hello, somebody. You need to have something, eh? I say you need to have something on the inside. My God, and when God put his word in you, and his song in you, and his spirit in you, and his anointing upon you, you can't help but praise him and serve him. If someone tell you to do something else, you'd ask, what does that mean? They would see you and look at you weird because they don't understand why you're not running after the things you used to run after and doing the things that you used to do amongst them. What God has called you. And when you hear that call, you know that royal call. You know who called you. My God, and you cannot deny in your spirit that you know it is him. And when you know for sure it is him, nobody can convince you <laughs> not to go to him. Uh, you can turn if you want to, because you still have free will. But no one can stop you uh, from serving God if you want to serve him. And I know that is true. Amen. Amen. And because I know that is true, I've made a vow to serve the Lord and to serve him with gladness. Ah, hallelujah. And I don't know. It's not just now this boy been serving the Lord. Huh? Oh, check the record, man. You will see. Follow back as far as you can. My God, those who are friends with me on Facebook can track back how many years that go. 
you can track back, you can look back through the history and see how far back it's going. Huh? Come on. You can track back on Instagram. You can track back on YouTube. Huh? You can track back. Hallelujah. Huh? And Twitter. My God. Huh? Even on some dating sites. My God. They would shut back and find me there. And I wasn't there looking nobody. They are sharing the word. They may be looking, but I'm showing them something different. Hello. Yes, man. Check the record, man. The record is there to prove. The Lord said, if you don't believe me for my words sake, believe me for my works sake. Check my work. Eh? What you say? You don't know? Check the work, man. Don't guess. Don't assume. Huh? Don't make any false assumption. Don't pretend like you know what you don't know. Check the record. Hello, somebody. And you will see the record speak for itself. There ain't no player. No gamester, no trickster. It's a real deal. What you see is what you get. Come on. Hallelujah. This is the real deal. And many have spoken some things against me to cause others to look at me funny and think, yes, he's not the man he claims to be. Huh? But the testimony still speaks. Not just back then. But it is still speaking now. And even more loudly now. Hallelujah. Of the Christ that lives in me. Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. And when I was sharing that with a young man since morning who made that vow. That step, that plunge. Mr. Anderson, here with us this morning. Hallelujah. Got baptized this morning. Praise God. And I am proud of him. And I told him that this is the greatest decision you will ever make in your life. And I'm praying that you'll never live to regret it. Because I never regretted it. And I told him I've messed up a lot along the way in the past. But what has kept me afloat and kept me to this point is that I didn't stop. I kept going until I get past that spot of struggling with sin to truly living for the Lord. Huh? Uh, you're going struggling with sin and not truly living for the Lord. But when you get past that struggle, that point of your heart, being double-minded and being double-hearted and drifting off and shaking off some friends that are not going where you're going, dropping off some weights that hinder in you from the path. And when you start to really commit to this, Lord of mercy. You move from religion to true relationship with God. And the devil can't stop it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, bless you. Later we call you. Hallelujah. And I'm telling you that God has much in store for us. And I'm here for this. I tell people all the while, I don't beg people to give their life to the Lord. I believe to beg people to give their life to the Lord is a short change in the gospel. And why I say short change in the gospel is that if I have a million dollars and I'm in a country where the country is depleted in finances and I'm saying I'm giving away a million dollars. I should not beg anyone to receive it. 
If I have to beg somebody to receive it, it's not really needed. You better hear what I tell you. And it will make it seem like the million dollars not worth much. Why you have to beg them to receive it? Huh? Come on now. Huh? Stay there they look for me. That's, that's why I don't notice. Say me no, beg nobody to come to altar. I don't beg them to come to altar. I don't beg them to give my life to the Lord. If you want to give your life to the Lord, give it. Because I know if I beg you to give it, I have to beg you to keep it. I'm beg you to stay. I mean, I'm not taking any burden there. You alone can't carry that one. You alone can't carry that one. Me not carry that one. I believe anybody of force to serve the Lord, you have to force them to steal the Lord. Force them to obey the Lord. Force them to worship the Lord. Force them to praise the Lord. I know me that. We now live after that one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I, I saw quite well how Philip shared the gospel with that Ethiopian eunuch. While he was riding on his chariot going back to Ethiopia. And many people don't know that's how the gospel went down to Ethiopia. That they could even have a person called here say, come from Ethiopia. And the Orthodox church was done. They heard the message of Christ. Heard the message of who? Of Christ. I say, I said to them, if you if you worship and and and, and celebrate Selassie, man, you must worship and celebrate Selassie God. Because Selassie said, Jesus Christ is his Lord and Savior. So if you worship Selassie as king, you must worship the king of kings. Ah. So enough of, them, enough of them don't know those things. But in Acts 4, it, it shows there where the, the Ethiopian eunuch. Huh? In Acts 8, yes, Acts 8. The Ethiopian eunuch was going down to Ethiopia. So the queen down there, and when he was on his way, he was reading from the book of Isaiah, Isaiah's prophecies, but he did not understand what he was reading. And the Holy Spirit led Philip to go up to him and ask him, do you understand? Huh? Do you understand what you are reading? In Acts 8, verse 30, Philip ran to him and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah and said, do you understand? What you're reading? Anybody who can read can read the book. But he said, Do you understand what you're reading? It's not French, but do you understand? Huh? And he said, He said, How can I? Unless what? Someone guides me. It's something today many don't want nobody to guide them. A thing to ask somebody to guide them would make them look weak. Lacking in IQ and intellectual power. And lacking in mental ability and stability. So they believe that no, they can do it themselves. You hear that one? Uh -huh. so, so, but this Ethiopian eunuch humbled himself and said, I, I don't understand it. I'm not going to pretend like I do. How can I understand it unless what? Someone guides me and it's not anyone. He's referring to when he says someone. Come on now. In other words, this must be somebody that understands the word. Oh, come on. Because somebody else can read it just like him and not understand it and try to guide him into what they don't understand. Huh? But he says, no, unless someone, now Philip being a preacher, will just preach, hallelujah, over the whole of that city and city was turned over to the Lord. Hallelujah. Where he preached down in Samaria. Philip was led by the Holy Spirit now to explain to him because Spirit Philip already understand the word. That's why God preached to souls and the whole city being saved in Africa, you know, prayer warriors with him. Never have a kind of prayer team. Intercessors with him. Him alone, God will not change the world of Samaria. Because when you know the word, and God anoint you to declare it, oh my God, you don't need no holy power entourage. Huh? I'm a bearer. 
and prayer warrior and coat carrier and umbrella carrier eh? no because you're going down there with the word and the God anointed you to declare that word now everyone is not anointed to declare the word like this Philip, but Philip could do any believer can just go to there and say, I do it. Hello? I see would have come out of some serious blow. Because that was Samir was under the bewitchment of a sorcerer down there called Simon. That he said, add all under his power from the least to the greatest. The whole city under the influence of this man's magical power. No doubt is unclean. Spirits he's working with. Huh? And he said in Acts 8 verse 9, there was a certain man called Simon who previously practiced what? Sorcery. They said previously because when, 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 when this, this, this man, hallelujah, Philip, went down there, things changed. Come on. One man changed a city, man. Can one man change a city? Lord of mercy. Come on. And he says this man was down there who previously practiced sorcery in the city astonishing the people of Samaria claiming that what? He was someone great to whom they all gave heed. In other words, they see and work and believe it. You say he's someone great from the least to the greatest saying what? They were saying this man is the great power of God. The power that he saw, they saw him destroy, the display. They say that there's the power of God. And that was not the power of God. That was the power of Satan. Sorcery is not the power of God. I want to talk to you. Especially when I make them tell you. But who who seek for seek fish and go a bush. Hello. He says, that's not the power of God. But they said, this man is the great power of God. And they heeded him. Because what? He astonished them with what? That is with his power. With his sorceries. For how long? For a long time. Come on, give me more. But when Philip, that's the change shift now. That's when things shift. When Philip, as he preached what? As he preached what? The things concerning the kingdom of God. And now Jesus alone didn't go preach. You better understand. It's kind of the preach Jesus and then start preaching kingdom yet. And devil not afraid when you say Jesus. Devil afraid when you start to talk about kingdom. Can you start to talk about power and authority? Ah. And Jesus never come preaching Jesus. Jesus came preaching the kingdom of God. That was the message he carried. Anytime he talked about himself was to prove that his message was real. So when he questioned his authority, I have to tell him, say, no, I'm the door. I'm the great shepherd. I'm the way, I'm the truth, the life. I am the one who the father sent. Yeah? So he's giving authenticity to the message he carried. But the message was not himself. The message was about the kingdom of God. Now, if people don't know today, say the gospel is the gospel of the kingdom of God. They know they say Jesus is the gospel. The gospel of Jesus is Jesus. Wrong. The gospel of Jesus is not Jesus. The gospel of Jesus is the gospel of the kingdom. Huh? Matthew 4 verse 23 says, Everywhere Jesus went, he was preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Matthew 4 verse 23. Yes, Jesus went about where? All Galilee teaching in the synagogues, preaching what? What was he preaching? The gospel of himself? No, the gospel of the kingdom. That's what that was preaching. And healing what? All manner of sickness and disease. In other words, the healing followed the gospel. But it's not going, going around saying healing and calling that gospel. Like what some doing today. Doing a healing ministry and say, it's the gospel they're preaching. That's not what Jesus was doing. Jesus was preaching the gospel of the kingdom and people were being healed. 
The healing was not the gospel. The healing followed the gospel. If you only give people healing and don't give them the gospel, they're still living our way to go to hell with a healthy body. But going to hell. Because is the gospel going to change them from the ways they have that will cause them to be disqualified from the kingdom of God? Ah, you got it? He said it also in Matthew 9, verse 23. Matthew 9, verse 35. Yes. Matthew 9, verse 35. He says, Then Jesus went about what? All the cities, all the villages, teaching what? In the synagogue. What a preaching. Oh, the gospel of the kingdom. Yeah? And see what follows? Healing every sick and every disease among the people. In other words, the teaching is not about the healing. If you teach people, say the gospel is the healing. Then when they come for healing and gone, they, they get the gospel. They only get a healing. And getting a healing no means you're saved. But the gospel will save you. Ah, God. Come on. So it says in, in Acts 8 verse 12 that Philip was there preaching things concerning the gospel of the kingdom of God. He didn't get the word straight from Christ. And that's what he's down here preaching. Oh my God. And something shifted. Not just for a few people, but over the whole city. Because when you leave kingdom, it going to affect cities and nations. You hear what I'm saying? That's why David don't want you to talk no kingdom. You know, mind you come with a little real message. Believe in the Lord and you shall be saved. Amen. Bless the Lord. You believe, you believe, you believe, you believe. And then what? You live like child of the hell and God the devil. Go with the devil and end up in a hell. Huh? That's not it. So I say, you need to know the gospel, the good news of the kingdom of God. The kingdom of heaven. Huh? And the good news is that that kingdom of heaven is coming to earth. Oh God. But they change up the message now. They say no. We're preaching for you to go to heaven. They're not preaching for the kingdom of heaven to come. They're preaching for you to go to heaven. <laughs> and call that gospel. Eh? Because they don't believe that kingdom is no longer a relative word. A relevant word today since you don't have much kings of nation anymore. Now you have prime ministers and presidents. So kingdom, the word kingdom becoming outdated. But the devil knows says kingdom is what this thing is about. He knows that the first thing God gave to man was a kingdom. Not religion. Oh my God. Adam got a kingdom in the garden. Genesis 1 verse 26. The Lord says, let them have dominion. That is the spear over which he is giving them to rule. What is that spear over which he gives them to rule? Over what? The fish of the sea. Over the birds of the air. Over the cattle. And over what? All the earth. And over what? Every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. That include the devil. That include the serpent. That's why I don't like your talk about kingdom. Because that put him right where he belongs. Under your feet. Lord Jesus. Come on somebody. And when him put him, you put him right where he belongs. Under your feet. He can rule over you. What under your feet can rule over you. Unless you believe you're under it. You won't submit to it. Huh? Come on now. So he don't mind you with your like religious message. Just believe in the Lord and you shall be saved. I don't realize uh, it's not just believing on him, it's believing on what he's saying and what he comes with, the message he comes with, the gospel of the kingdom. The good news of the kingdom 
is that God's how God operates in the heaven that means that operation is coming into the earth and Jesus starts you to pray about it he said you must pray thy kingdom come so he said you must pray thy will be done where on earth as it is done where so he didn't say you have to go to heaven for the will to be done he said you must pray for what happening in heaven Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. And he said, there's no death in heaven. There's no sickness in heaven. There's no blind in heaven. There's no dumb in heaven. No mute in heaven. No diseases in heaven. No devil in heaven. Come on now, come on now. No sin in heaven. Oh my God. So he said, when you are praying for that to happen now, the devil starts to get very concerned. Because he knows that he's been kicked out of that place. And that means that you're already signing up his, his, his expulsion letter. You're signing up his, his eviction notice for him to be evicted out of the earth atmosphere. For you to have true dominion here as God have it dear. Oh, come on, somebody. And that troubles the devil a lot. Yeah. So don't mind your thinking this as a religious thing. Go at church, get one nice good sermon, and like a prayer, and like a blessing, and go back home, go play dead. You don't mind when you live like that. Because he said, you don't know what this is about. You don't understand the kingdom. Those who understand the kingdom come back with something more. Every time they step in and step out, they come back with something more. Because they get something more that is positioned in them for something more. And each time they get some more, it's something more they're going to use to, uh, to release torment and affliction upon the gates of hell. Come on, somebody. And they are not going to bow. They are not going to retreat. They are not going to bow down and play dead. For the devil to have his way. No, woe is me. Only few of they serve the Lord. And the devil just go on bad down here. Boy, God, may God take me quick before it and destroy me. Not at all. He says, this, Jesus said upon the, this rock, I build my church on the gates of hell shall not prevail against it he said they will plan they will conspire they will put their arms and their weapons together but they will not prevail come on somebody they may come one way but they will flee seven ways they can't keep the place here because greater is he that is in us what you say what you say what you say you don't hear this yet Hello, somebody. I need to talk to some people that know say the word true. Some man who sound like you know half a week, you don't have a week yet. Hey, sound like you never eat no breakfast since morning. Sound like you need some encouragement. Oh Lord. Make your stick with Lord. Eh? The devil must be here saying, make your song get it over with. Because we must determine him. Instead, you sit and make the devil they torment you. Hello, somebody. You need to remember that the, the, your elder brother Jesus said, All power is given unto me, both in heaven and in earth. And he says, Man, now I tell you to go and make disciples of men. So he said, When I tell you to go, don't go weird, don't go wavering and doubting and shaking and trembling. Go with the boldness and the power and the authority of the Lord. Knowing that he that sent you have all the things in place to back up your mission and to make sure that you're successful in all you sent you to do. Hello, somebody. So I'm not with no pity party, woe is me. The world will get terrible and terrible. Oh God, me kiss, lad. Hmm. Devil is a liar. I said the devil is a liar. I come to give hell to the devil. 
He can't stand me anytime this eyes pop up in a morning time. The demons them run and say, weak. Come on, somebody. And I'm here to give the devil hell. He's given me a lot of hell when I didn't understand this gospel. But now I understand it. Oh my God. The gates of hell are free when they see me. Even when they hear my name. Even when they see my picture. You know, see it? Yeah, man, people that report say, man, they put up even my almanac. And I then roam with demon when they come and demon come and see picture up on the almanac and run. Does a picture? Lord of mercy. Huh? Demon come the whole long man and a man they read some man, him and demon and think and say, You don't know Papa Sophia again. And demon run. <laughs> Lord of mercy. Come on. Because when your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Powers of darkness got to bow. Oh, you're not hearing me. You're not hearing me. You're not hearing me this morning. I said, powers of darkness got to bow. We're not asking it. We're not, we're not making no excuse. We're not begging them in no petition. This is a command. Hallelujah. That they got to bow. 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 I said they got to bow. Why you think so when you say Jesus? So much fear start to wrench up. Why you think when you say Jesus? So much start to turn. Why you think so when you say Jesus? So much start to bend against you. Why you think when you say Jesus? So much things start to turn and get upset. So much things start to go on hard against you and the draw back. Come on. Because Jesus still have that message. He still have that message, I say. And that message is the gospel of the kingdom. The good news of the kingdom is that same way oh God deal with them in heaven. God go deal with them in the earth. The angels that got up and rebelled were cast out. And he said, those who get up and rebel are going to be cast out too. Hello! One of you know say that you pray. When you pray, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done where? On earth like it is done where? Then what happened in heaven? The angels who sin were cast out. So if you continue to sin down here, what will happen to you? And that's your prayer now. You are praying what happened in heaven, happened in earth. You're praying for the same means of governance there to manifest here. So you better make sure so you're on the right side. Otherwise, you're praying your doom. Hello. That's why we're telling you repent. That's why you say, God command men everywhere to repent. It's not a suggestion. Huh? It's not a request. It's a command. And those who resist the command will perish. Hello. They are already perishing. And they'll be cut off without any hope of recovery. Huh? And so he wanted to be rooted and grounded in the Lord. And the Lord is preaching what? The good news of the kingdom. That those who truly want to serve God, those who humble themselves, shall be exalted. And those who exalt themselves shall be abased. Those who believe in the Lord and submit to him will not perish, but have what? Oh my God, that's the life of the kingdom. Unbroken fellowship with the Lord. Hello? Sin breaks that fellowship. But the Lord wants you to have what? Everlasting life. Huh? Come on. Philip had to explain to that Ethiopian eunuch what it meant. He read the word, but he never understood what it meant. Somebody who God placed with the word had to come to explain it to him. No, sir. 
Come on, somebody. And that's what is happening. Many people use their own mind to figure out what it means. They will not trust the ones God sent to teach them because they have heard a lot of false ones and they have confused and deceived them. So they believe, say, and they don't trust anybody else. Everyone now the guy see as false. But where has that put them? Their lives have become like the chaff that the wind drive away. They are not stable. They are unstable in all their ways. Then there's a pitch like a huh? pitch here. They have no abiding city. Huh? This minute then they are so next minute they are by the so. It's meaning they with this person, then they with that person over there. So, huh? Unstable. And God doesn't build. And what is unstable? Ah, oh, God. That's the principle of the kingdom. He says, those who hear the word, they are like those who build upon the rock. Come on. Those are wise builders. But those who hear and do not do, they are foolish builders. Still building, but foolish. And all their efforts and work will be in vain. Hello, all they build up, they will lose. Because they didn't take heed to the word. Come on. And there's a deceiver. There's a destroyer out there. Seeking to steal and to kill. And to destroy. Seeking those he may destroy. Devour. And it says you who get the word. Must be equipped with the word now. To counteract his measures. Of attacks against you. Because even when you don't attack him. He's attacking you. Come on. So you better be fully ready for this. Come on. You never hear people that say. But well, me not do nothing. We don't understand why people don't love me. We don't do nothing. Why they hate me so? We never do them. Not. They don't understand the war they're in. They don't believe the gospel. When you believe the gospel, you'll understand why that is happening. But when you don't understand the gospel, huh? you'll hear it, but you don't understand it. The devil come and shipwreck your life. Because he know the gospel is something powerful you must use against him. But you like you have a loaded gun and you don't even know if you use it. Gunman take away from you and use it same one and kill you. Because you don't know what you have in your hand. Come on now. Those who are empowered with the gospel are dangerous to the enemy. My God. That's why from you here, this gospel, everything in your life going to shift. That's why from you here, the gospel, everything going to start to get topsy-turvy. Because the devil don't want you to keep hearing this. He knows you keep hearing this, meditating on this, feasting on this, something is going to happen on the inside of you. That's going to transform your inside out. Now the world let try to transform people. But they are trying to transform them outside in. That's where they get a transgender from. But God knows to change your inside out. Huh? Come on now. And God change your inside out. That's an authentic change huh? that's no counterfeit glory to God that's one that is rooted and grounded in truth come on somebody huh? and I say you can't know the power of God until you submit to the word of God huh? come on somebody and anyone submit to the word will see the power of the word huh my god my god mm? so what happened the eat philip spoke to the ethiopian eunuch explained to him the scripture what happened it was the ethiopian eunuch that said to philip 
here is water. What prevents me from being baptized? You see, if Philip, I beg him after him preach the word to him to get baptized. Philip no say he no really want it. You know, if you beg people forget what they don't want. When they don't want to make them go on. We don't run down people for this, you know. Because it's something valuable I have. I believe I got something very expensive and dear. Lord have mercy. What you say? We don't have something cheap. Because it was man-made. Hallelujah. Nor was it directed and released by men. But God is infinite mercy and grace. They clear this word of the kingdom to man. Come on. To include him as an ear in his reign. Come on, somebody. And the devil hit that to the very ground it come from. Hello. And you have to understand that you now must stand by the word. Must what? Lord have mercy. How much people standing by the word? I say how much people standing by the word? You can hardly find people standing by the word now. They can get all up in their clothes. And all up in their money. And all up in their house. And up in their pride. And award. And business and things. They forget about the word. The real treasure you have here. Is the word of God. When everything has failed. The word of God will never fail. Come on somebody. And those who know the treasure of the word. Not going to gamble it out for any satisfaction in the flesh. And finding money. And pride and fame. They know say the word giving them something more. Something far more valuable. That they are unwilling to exchange for some less. Come on now. And I believe the church needs to be diligent to look for those kind of people. Those Jesus wasn't looking and drawing everybody. He's looking for those who are hungry and thirsting after righteousness. And when you find people that hunger and thirst after righteousness, you know, if you force them to come take it. Man, you ever cook food for people who are really hungry? My God, my God. You want somebody really appreciate your cooking? <laughs> eh? I say you want somebody really appreciate your cooking? Get some hungry people, man. And you get people who are barely too full and them sit on This could have used some more salt and... This is not crunchy enough. This should be softer. This should need some more gravy. Or this this have too much gravy. Or this get some hungry people, and we'll see you then wipe up the dish and kiss your hand and tell you thank you. And do you have more? Oh Jesus. Come on now, somebody. Uh, that's why the Lord said, instead of when you have your birthday party, you call all them long belly. Big head friend of yours. But when they come, they can't give you back party and you have to go give them back party too. He said, get them people that are the street. My God, and feed them what can't feed you. And he said, you will have treasures in heaven. Come on, somebody. Huh? No, man, they love the things to people. And say, when they do it for you, then, then expect you to do it back for them. And if you don't do it back for them, you're no good friend. Come on. And the Lord said, if you operate like that, what reward do you have? Huh? You're not operating like children of God. You're operating like children of men who lend to get back what they lend, who give to get back what they give. He said, Hold on, God give whole heap that He don't get back. He give to people that don't have it to give back. 
And he's still God. Come on, somebody. Then he see a child of God. Must operate like God. Oh, come on, somebody. That's why the devil don't like it, you know. Because he don't mind, he don't want you thinking you can operate like God. No man, he like when you think I'm only human. I'm just a man. That him love, man. Eh? Huh? You look a weakling. Eh? Huh? Man of sorrow. <laughs> and of war. Hallelujah. Eh? Yeah? That him love. When you can ban your belly and ball. Lock up in a room. And they say, come down, Jesus. Then he says, see there. It's working. <laughs> come on now. Clapping hand and skinning teeth with the little demon friend. And say so we got him right where we want him. Huh? He ready to go home. Can't take me no more down here. Huh? When it's you must be down here giving the devil hell. Till he have to look where else he can he run. Oh, come on, somebody. Eh? Because you're an ambassador. Of Jesus Christ. And when Jesus show up demons. They look where for run. Eh? My God in heaven. And you they look where for run when you see demon. What that? Come on somebody. You need to understand the gospel. Tell somebody you need to understand the gospel. Those who understand the gospel will bear fruit to the glory of the father it's not the glory of the father for you to fall in sin for you to be afraid of the devil for you to fall a victim to his schemes you are more than a conqueror in jesus name you are an overcomer you are blood wash holy ghost fail Temple of the living God. Walking. Talking. Manifesting. The power and presence. Of almighty God. When you show up. All hell must know. When you show up. You must know you bring something different to the room. Hallelujah. Because you are a walking ark of the covenant with the testimony and the sure bread and the commands in you, glories in you. Oh, and when you step in the room, you must know things must shift once you're present. Come on, somebody. Instead, your things say, No, ah, we have to just live with them, not, not change. Only when Jesus come back, then we're going to see things different, my dear. All we have to do is take here and just warning on until the Lord come. Eh? What a sad excuse for Jesus. Hello, somebody. You need to be bold. You need to be courageous. Oh my God, you need to be vigilant. You need to rise up and command things. I don't hear anybody here. Really. So my God, you don't look like you don't come to church this morning. You ready to go home? Like someone look kind of ready to sleep now. Hallelujah. Eh? Eh? When the word hits your spirit, it must have an abiding city. Mustn't pass through like when they say Pitney hard years. Go through one year and go through the other. Not no retaining in between. Head empty. Eh? When you have a place for the word, when the word hits your spirit. Oh, shut up, sir. Something must move. 
something must quake something must tremble something must shake anything that is not of God must move come on somebody cause you don't come to play church you don't come just to look for church you're a part of the church part of the body of Christ the church is not a religious organization the church is the Lord's body huh he said just like the, the woman is the body of the man huh he said her body belongs to the husband that's so. and her and her husband body belong to her and the one the two shall become one flesh he said just like that Christ is declaring you his body anybody touch you touch him Oh, shame, Asa. Anything come against you, come against him. And he said, I'm going to defend that. So he said, leave all vengeance. Come on, somebody. He said, what? Leave all vengeance to me. I'm going to deal with that. So if he's going to deal with it, why well, you must sit on the worry about it? You know, believe him, going to deal with it. So if you believe him, going to deal with it, what should you do? Come on now, somebody. You should, oh my God. You should have a praise. You should have a worship. You should have a hallelujah. You should have a thank you, Jesus. Because he's got it. I say he's got it. I say he's got it. My God. So when Philip shared the word with you to Ethiopian eunuch, is the Ethiopian eunuch see the first sight of water and say, "Here is water. What prevents me from being baptized?" Man, that man was ready. And Philip, no, 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 be, become like say, "Well, you want baptized? Woo! Let's jump in now." No, you hear what Philip said. Philip said, if you truly believe, if you believe with all your heart, I say in Acts 8 verse 37, if you believe with all your heart, you may. If you believe with all your heart, you may. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of Oh, come on. He didn't say, is a son. He said, is the son. That means that man believe. Jesus is not just a man. He's the son of God. And being son of God, he's God. He's of the same kind. Lord Jesus. So that when a man say, believe, Philip said, you got it, man. Come on, somebody. Philip baptized that man. The gospel went down into the region of Ethiopia. Come on, somebody. But you got to understand the more the gospel go, the more the devil going to raise up people to speak against the gospel and to corrupt people's minds against the ones who bring the gospel. So just like how God sent out true apostles, they are false apostles. Just like there are true prophets, there are false prophets. Just like there's true Christ, there's an antichrist. Huh? Just like there is one who is sent, hallelujah, true God to bring the word to you. The devil sends some to bring word to you. And they come with signs and lying wonders. Come on. And too many been hurt and wounded. They don't trust nobody again. But when you don't trust nobody, you don't really trust God. Because when you trust God, God will show you who to trust. God will never tell you, trust me alone. Find one place in the Bible, God tell you that. God will never tell you that. But many are saying that today. Holy God alone I trust. 
Where did they get that from? The devil. And you see, for those people, for them to believe, God have to come down and show them. Do you hear that one? For those people, God have to come down and show them. In other words, forget the Bible. God have to come down and write it personal for them and give them private lesson. God, they refuse anyone the Lord send. But the Lord said, anyone who receive even a child that come in my name will have their sure reward. And those who receive a prophet will gain a prophet's reward. Huh? So he says, he ain't coming alone. He's God. He will send messengers. He will send servants. He will send us to bring the word to you. And if you can believe him, you can believe his servants. Come on. Jesus said to them, if you believe in God, believe also in me. Come on. Also, he's speaking of company. So if he's in one alone, how would he say also? Come on, somebody. Also speaks of company. Come on. Can't be I alone and you have also. <laughs> Come on. Be wise about what you're saying. Come on now. So it says many have twisted the truth. To suit their lifestyle. And where has that put them? You see how they're living? Are they satisfied with how they're living? Well, God is not satisfied. God knows that if you love the truth, you will stand by those who declare the truth. Huh? God knows if you love the truth, truth will have a registry in you. You won't just hear it. It will stir up something on the inside. Because truth have a connection in you. The spirit bears witness with your spirit when you are connected to truth. But when there's no witness, it just passing by. Huh? Information, but no revelation. Come on. Just passing by with information, but no connection. Come on now. And that's what is happening. Many of them are falling asleep. Hello. They lose in sight of the word and the power of the word because they are too much mindful of their flesh and not of the spirit. And I said it even since morning. You can't use the flesh to truly serve God. You have to serve God from your spirit and bring the flesh under subjection to that service. But you can't try to use flesh for serving. Flesh go and tell you, say, I'm tired. I don't want to do it this morning. I've had enough. I'm not going any further. Huh? Flesh will tell you, you do it enough already. You don't have to do it this morning. Come on. Flesh will tell you, you're doing it for so long. You can take an excuse today. Come on, but the spirit never excuse you from doing what God says. But flesh will. You hear what I say? That's why you, got, you can't lean on this flesh. Woo! But when you lean on the spirit, now you can know by the spirit who to walk with. <sighs> Come on, somebody. Who to trust? Who to hear? And you'll find that the results are consistent. It's not sometimes true, sometimes false. God don't speak like that. Everything God speaks is true. Huh? And when you speak like God, that's how it will sound from you. He says, those who lie, lie no more. He never said lie less. Or lie less frequently. 
He says, speak the truth to each other in love, in a spirit of meekness. Huh? And those who steal, steal no more. He never say, well, steal less. Huh? He said, those activity must cease from you. Why? Because the word of the kingdom is in you. That God is now ruling over your heart. And what is being ruled by God don't include sin. Come on now. Sin have to be booted out. Devil have to push away. And you walk in the newness of life in Christ Jesus. What you say? Because that word in you is growing. Is increasing. Is releasing new power to you. New ability that you never thought you had. You know what it is to be tempted. And everything in your flesh is saying yes. But the spirit within you is saying no. My God and flesh under arrest. Flesh can move an inch. Because it's subdued by the spirit. That's the life of faith. That's the life of the just. The just shall live by faith. And he said, if you're living by faith, we must see that life. Hello, somebody. And many don't get that life yet. My God, they're just trying to play along. They're just in the crowd. They're just in the group. But there are some, my God, that are determined. That this life, they're not going to gamble with it. They're not going to play with it. They're not going to make it slip away from them because of some seduction, temporary passing pleasure from the devil. Because we know what we have is priceless, incomparable. Hi, Boshanda. Somebody give him praise. Anybody got it? Never want to lose it. My God, you know when you're in fellowship with the Lord, how sweet it is. How sweet it is. You don't want anyone, anything to break that fellowship. My God, you don't want anyone to disturb that peace you have with the Lord. Come on, somebody. And you cannot allow the enemy, even an inch, to come in because he will spoil that. There's no fellowship between light and darkness. There's no fellowship between unrighteousness and righteousness. No fellowship between Christ and the devil. No agreement between them. Come on, somebody. And you who walk by faith must ensure that that is your testimony. What you say? What you say? So you believe the word. Hold to the word. We are declaring word here every day. How much day? How much day? Sometimes even twice a day. Hallelujah. And some of you only hear it once per week. What that do for you? If you're going to eat once per week, how much, how much strength you would have? If you spend so much time feeding the flesh and so little time feeding the spirit, will you have any strength to resist the devil? That's why we will tell you to walk sinless. Some of you can't believe that's what we are telling us. So. You believe say, we're only farming, we're doing the same like you. But the devil is fooling you. Because if you don't feed the spirit, your spirit man will not stand. Body with fat and nourish and spirit man malnourish and maga. Breeze the blow away. Huh? Every little thing affect you. Everything trigger you off. Your spirit so weak and it will blow, you're gone with it. Because your spirit man must be nourished with the word. That's your spiritual food. Ah, hello. My God, and if you don't love your belly so much, if you don't love your soul like I love your belly, you'd have to do better. Hello. 
Because, but it says, those who are mindful of the flesh shall not please God. It's not a may not. Cannot. It is impossible for them to please God. Why? Because they are mindful of the flesh. Their mindfulness of the flesh caused them to be blocked in hearing from God. Their mind is otherwise minded. That what God is talking to them about, they don't have no time to focus on it. Eh? Hello. That's why they can't watch movie for one and a half hour and can't hear a preacher for one. They can't watch movie for one and a half hour. Movie no less than one and a half hour. So movie all two hours. And three. Come on. And then I watch just one movie. Hello, somebody. So how can they give such attention to things that entertain their flesh? But when it comes to feeding the spirit, they can't keep up. <laughs> ah, Jesus. You know, the old church I used to go was the first time I saw the Lord of my eyes to see demons, demonic spirits coming in the church. And when they come in the church and stand behind someone's seat, they don't stop book till the service done. I thought it was just people tired. Our people bored. But the Lord showed me. Opened my eyes and showed me. Spirit walking. And when, when the dancing and the singing going on, the eye wide open. But when the word come. Hello somebody. Spirit can't keep up to hear it. Because there's our spirits there ensuring they don't get it. Those are guardsmen. Those are the jail keepers to make sure so the captives not go free. They stand at the gate. And reinforce the lock. Huh? You come into the house of God. And left and hear the word of God. So what is sense you come? Come on somebody. Some can be so close to their breakthrough. So close to the point of transformation and deliverance and miss it because they are otherwise minded. The devil knows when the word gets into your spirit. And resides there. And have enough contact in your spirit. What the word is going to do. You don't see it. Anytime you must get that kind of word. There is a distraction. Something you remind you about. Something you want to show you. Something you want to tell you. Come on. Those who are not mindful of that miss out. They come in, but they're not getting nothing. And all I can keep coming and not getting nothing. 
and facing the devil. Hello? Because the word of God is the sword of the spirit. If you're not getting no ammunition to fight, how long are you going to last on the battlefield? Before you run out a bullet. Come on, somebody. I say, how long? I say, how long? You're going to last on the battlefield without ammunition. Watch out. Come on now. Because the battle is getting hotter. The enemy is getting more persons to join him. To come at you. And you have to learn spiritual warfare. Come on somebody. From the young to the old. Come on now. We're under the power of Simon the sorcerer. But when Philip go down there and tell them, declaring to them the gospel of the kingdom, things concerning the kingdom and Christ. Yeah? What happened now? Obiaman shop lock up. Up to Obiaman of a lock up business. Come on, you don't know, say this gospel put some of your man out of business. Making lose some strong clients. Make some of my support cut off. Show that some get grudgeful. And come join the church, say them a prophet. Ay, 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 ay. Eh? Come on. Till they have people that cut short. Eh? Yeah. Yeah. When tell him long time, say, oh, your man, they never believe me. I said it three years before they exposed, and I said, no, don't say it. We are all serving God, and we must not speak ill of other men serving God. Until short cut, then you hear them say, cultic pastor. You never said cultic before. Until somebody threw it cut. Because they don't know to discern spirits. Peter could discern the spirit of this Simon. Yeah. Philip baptized him. Huh? The man in Acts 8. Verse 12 and 13. When they believe Philip. And he preached the things concerning what? Concerning what? The kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ. Both men and women were baptized. And then Simon himself also believed. And when he was baptized, he continued with Philip. And was amazed what he was amazing. You see, he still loved power. And when he say Amir's, his envy is envy, you know. The power that Philip is operating in. And he won't get the same power because the people now gone from him to Philip. And he believe if he have the power, he can get the people them back and dime. Watch it, you know. For those power seekers. Come on now. Watch it. Eh? And what happened? Peter and John, amongst the apostles when they were at Jerusalem, heard that Samaria had received the word of God. They sent Peter and John to them, who when they had come down, prayed for them that they might what? Receive the Holy Spirit. Now then tell us, hey, once you're baptized and you receive Christ, you receive Holy Spirit. These people are baptized and receive Christ and never receive the Holy Spirit yet. See enough of the message change? I say, you see enough of the message change? Okay. 
He says, for verse 16, for as yet he had fallen upon none of them. They had only what? They had only what? Been baptized in what? The name of the Lord Jesus Christ. What had they received the Holy Spirit? No. Come on. Then what? Peter and John. Apostles were laying hands on them. To receive the Holy Spirit. To what? To receive the Holy Spirit. And as yet, he had not fallen on them. So it says, they laid hands on them. And what? They received the Holy Spirit. And then what happened? When Simon saw that what? When Simon saw that what? Whose hands? No man, they say anybody can lay hands on people and they receive the Holy Spirit. They don't believe what the words say. It changed now. They have a different gospel. They have a different gospel. Man. They don't believe in the laying on of the apostles' hands anymore. No, you have to have an apostle on God. Anybody who believes can do that. But Simon recognized it happened when the apostles laid their hands. Ah, uh, and that was what he was willing to pay their money to have the power to do it by laying off his hand look at it when simon saw that what he can't believe that's when he was when simon saw that what To the laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Spirit was given. He offered them money, saying, Give me this power also, that anyone, awo, and whom I lay on, may receive the Holy Spirit. But Peter said to him, What? Your money perish with you, because you thought the gift of God. Could be purchased with money. What gift of God do you think you're talking about? No. He wasn't asking, paying money to receive the Holy Spirit. He was paying money for the gift that when he lay his hand, people receive the Holy Spirit. Really good. He is paying for that power to do it. And Peter is saying to him, is, is that that was given to us as a gift. For us apostles, it was given to us as a gift that we lay we hand on. We didn't work for it, we didn't pay for it, we didn't sweat for it. He said, You thought the gift of God could be purchased with money. Come on, somebody. Huh? And they wonder why this man pray for some and whole church they pray, whole class they pray, prayer words they pray, they don't get the same results. They don't respect the office of the apostles. They don't respect the, what Paul called the signs of the apostles. Philip was not an apostle. That's why Philip could lead them into Christ. Philip could pray and demons get cast out. Philip could heal them. Philip could do miracles amongst them. But Philip could make them receive the Holy Spirit. Philip had to wait till the apostles come to do that. They don't think that way in the church anymore. Anybody can do it. That's what that's the doctrine they submit to. That's why they don't respect the office. And in the office you don't respect, you can't get the benefit from it. Come on, somebody. Huh? I say an apostle, apostle, where you must call him apostle. <laughs> title, title. They don't like people title. 
Christ is not Jesus' name. Christ is a title. And he says, every knee shall bow. Every tongue will confess that title. That he of that title. That Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord is a title. Come on, somebody. Huh? They said, no, man. And then them title, title thing. And people get bigger, they don't feel so they're better than people because they're in title. You must respect title. Hello, somebody. God didn't tell you to disrespect it. But you must honor what is true. And he said, give double honor to those who are true. Huh? Did he say double honor? Did he say, honor your mother and father? That your days may be long. That it may be well with you. It's the first commandment with promise. And did he say, give double honor to those who minister to you the word? That is twice as much honor you give to your mother and father. How much person obeying that? They say yes, but are they obeying it? Come on. When they're obeying it, we're going to see better results in the church. You hear what I say? When they what? When they're obeying the word, we're going to see better results in the church. As long as they keep, yes, we know what is written there. Are you doing it? Is the doers of the word that are truly blessed. <laughs> it's not those that can repeat and say, yes, it's there. It's those who practice in it will see the power of that word manifest in their life. Are you hearing me? Huh? Glory to God. Glory to God. And Simon was ready. And Philip agreed with him. Come on. Come on. So Philip received Christ and was baptized. But Philip, what was Ethiopian eunuch, received Christ and was baptized. But he didn't receive the Holy Spirit. The apostles would need to go down there and lay hands on them. Uh, if you don't receive the Holy Spirit, you still will be under the law. Trying to do of your own works, trying to get saved. But you're going to have many faults and mess up and chip up. And think that that's just the best you can do because God knows you're trying. But God needed to be empowered. To be what? Empowered with his Holy Spirit. When you're empowered with the Holy Spirit, we're going to see new life spring up on the inside of you. Flesh will still be tempted. But the Holy Spirit will bring that new life to you. That you will not yield to the flesh. But be directed by the Holy Spirit. Come on somebody. And so you will prove that you are truly. Children of God. Stand with me we are going to pray. Hallelujah. God is calling. But he says, he that have an ear, let him hear. I'm not begging people to listen to me. I declare the word when there was none here. Till people start to come here. Hello somebody. 
And even after all has left, I'll still be declaring the word. Hello, somebody. Because it's the word that will bring that purity in you. You can't be pure without the word. And you can't live pure without the Holy Spirit. You need both to have the life. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Lift those hands to Jesus. Hallelujah. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to thee, my blessed say. Oh, I. Oh, yes. Can you give it to Jesus this morning? Say, I surrender all. Woo. Hallelujah. Come on. I surrender all Woo. all to thee my blessed Savior I Woo. come on one more time from the depths of your heart say to Jesus I surrender all Hey God, and I surrender all. Hey, hey, oh, to Thee, my blessed Savior. I, Hallelujah. So hear myself away. Hey, oh, say it again. I give myself away. Woo. every day, every day, Lord. Hey, 
today. So you can use, said I can hear myself. Hey, it's all I have got. It's all I got. Hallelujah. Come on, take it to the bridge. My life is not my own. Come on, say. My life is not my own. To you I belong. To you I be. I give myself. Give myself. I give myself to you. My life is not my own. My life is not. You I belong. So I give myself. Hallelujah. Come on, one more time, church. Lift up those hands. My life is not Yebosha. You are below. Give myself. Hallelujah. Not our will, but yours be done, Lord. Hey, my life is not. You are below. So I give myself. Give myself away. It's not. It's not. Give myself away. So you can use me. Give myself away. Every day. Have your way. Give myself. No more I, but it's you that live inside. Give myself away. Ooh, it's not everything. I give myself away. Oh God, you can use me any way you see fit. Give myself away. Oh, 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 oh. I give myself away. Yeah, so you can use. Come on, praise him. Praise him. Yes, Lord. Yehoshama. You are still that same God that know how to fill every vessel that is available to you. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Every vessel, the emotion you will feel. Say, those who hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. Roshara Baseto. Heal Amoshe Heal from the crown of her head. To the sole of her feet. Hey, hey, hey. Feel, Lord. Heal Abosha. And refresh and renew every fiber of her being. Kirosha Barabasetu. Ilabosha ma. Le candala masitu. Ribema katara masi. Ribema shekere baba se kondele besaya. Ilabosha na mama setu. Robot ki heba ka alamasi. Ilemashi ko. Raba katana masitu. Ibosha na masetu. Raba shikebasi. Hey, somebody worship. Somebody worship. Somebody worship. Any worshippers in the house? Executive of the Godhead. Comforter. Hallelujah. 
In the name of Jesus. Hey! Somebody worship him. Somebody worship. Somebody worship. Somebody worship. Somebody worship. Somebody worship. Let the worship was let the worship was worship. Let the worship was worship. Let the worship was. Yeah, mama, she corrupted. Alama sitorosend. Come on, open your mouth and worship God. Everybody in the room. Everybody in the room. Everybody in the room. Nila bosha talabase. Release, 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 release. Rababa koho seba setu. Eba setu. God, 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 God. God. Aye. Die kebo sha talabase. Ebo sha talabase tu. Mama Moshe Baba Setu Kitorobo Shinamasa Yebosha Hayibo Shimasi Heye Kimasi Hallelujah Hallelujah Yekebo Roma Mama Sitroshe Yes, Lord, everything is yours. It all belongs to you, Lord. Yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Forever and ever, oh God. Forever and ever, forever and ever. Forever and ever. <laughs> forever and ever. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, somebody. Praise him in the room. Give him the glory. Give him the honor. Give the wind a mighty voice. Declare the praise of our King. Hallelujah to him. Worship the King of glory. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Yeah. 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 Oh, Sheba said. Hallelujah. He deserves it. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Lord. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You sense that connection. Glory to God. Come on, I'm say to in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, be refreshed in his presence, be refilled in his presence. May he be in you a spring of living waters, springing up unto everlasting life. 
Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We put it all before you, Lord. We trust in your everlasting arms to bring forth that deliverance in every era of our life as we yield to your father you will do exceedingly and abundantly and above all we could think hope or imagine you who began this good work you are faithful to perform it you will do just what you said. And we humble ourselves before you. And say, Lord, have your way. According to your word, be it unto us. In Jesus' name. Come on, praise him one more time. <laughs> Come on, bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You may be seated. Gonna release you in a few minutes. Hallelujah. We just have one last thing to do. And that is releasing you to sow as the Lord has laid on your heart. It was Isaac who asked his father, Father, I see the fire and I see the altar. I see the wood and the fire. But where is the sacrifice? He knew that his father said, Me and the boy, we are going to worship and come. And Isaac was taught well to know without sacrifice, there is no true worship. True worship requires a sacrifice. Amen. True worship requires a sacrifice. The three wise men went to worship. The king was born in a manger. But they came with sacrifices. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. They brought sacrifices. They didn't just come and say, we just come to see him and say, thank God he's here. Hallelujah. No, they brought sacrifice. And that is still a principle in the kingdom of God. Hello, somebody. That is still what? A principle in the kingdom of God that those must understand. Why do we give offerings and tithes in the house of God? Because we understand the principle of sacrifice. Amen. That you don't worship without a sacrifice. Hallelujah. You don't what? Yes, praise God. So that's a principle everybody in here needs to know and everyone needs to apply Praise God. Well, while you're doing so, I'll speak the last word to those who are watching online. So those who are watching online, you're watching Increase in Faith, Deliverance Ministries International. We're at 3 East Street, Montego Bay, Jamaica. I'm Apostle Richard Fagan, declaring the gospel of Christ and his kingdom. You wanted to know the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. And I believe that the truth, knowing the truth, is what brings that deliverance, that, liberal, that liberation that the sons of God is operating in. The freedom of the sons come through their submission to the word and the work of the Holy Spirit in them with the word. And so we want to know that's how God is birthing children. And even Christ himself had to make an ultimate sacrifice to show his worship to the Father. His obedience to the Father was unto death. And even so, he gave his life, hallelujah, as payment for the ransom of man. That through him, men would believe and would have eternal life. Amen. And so we want you to know, God still has that system in place. And wants you to be a part of it. The word of the kingdom is the word that Jesus preached. We reached a book year before last year on Amazon.com. It's called the Gospel of the kingdom subtitle the gospel that 
Jesus preached. We encourage Christians all over the world to get a copy of it to build your faith. Even if you heard the gospel before, I believe it's going to be a real, bring a real level of depth into your relationship that will greater supplement and apply to what you've already been applying and yield greater levels of fruit. The Lord said even those who produce fruit, he will prune that they will bear more fruit. So there's still more to learn that will make you be a better representative and yield greater results as a child of God. And so we want you to walk in it. God is still downloading revelation in the truth, of truth in the body of Christ. And he wants you to be recipients of it so you can really declare and reveal his glory in you and through you in the lives of others. Hallelujah. So in order to get that copy of the book, you can order on Amazon.com. Type Richard V. Fagan in the search box and you'll see it come up. And you can order it anywhere around the world. We also can, you can also download it through Kindle to your device to read it immediately if you want it. Without waiting on shipping and handling, you can go to Kindle and have it downloaded to your device to read it online or offline. It will be a very powerful tool for you and readily available for your use. We also have more teaching in the house. Just send a friend request to Richard V. Fagan on Facebook. You'll be plugged into our five live stream teachings every week on Facebook. We also added more scripture to it on our YouTube channel. You can subscribe and see that for yourself. That will be more resourceful in finding scriptures to base the evidence of your faith on the scripture, the word of God. Amen. Praise God. And also those who want to hear more of the ministry, hallelujah, or know more about us, can check out our website. It's increasing faith, I-N-T-L dot O-R-G. That's increasing faith, I-N-T-L dot O-R-G. Those who are interested to sow to the ministry can sow to the website. The information is there. All who want to connect with us as partners in projects that we're dealing with, long-term or short-term goals are there that you want to connect with us to get it done. We believe together we can do more and we can apart. So who God assigned to us, we need them on board with us to get the work moving and advancing the cause of the kingdom in the hearts of men worldwide. Amen. The more we can do, the more people we can reach, more people we can reach, the more people God will use to reach others. And we must be mindful of that. Because the word of God says, he that winneth souls is wise. Praise God. And he wants you to be on board with what he is about. Hallelujah. And know that truly, that's where your true purpose and blessing lies. Amen. Praise God. So those who want to have daily teachings in the word, we also have scriptures that were taught here that were not live stream services that were not live streamed that were daily taught here in the house we scripted it put it in the ebook form a daily measure of each month it's in monthly editions from last year january until now over 17 months of teaching so we want you to just connect with us request it by the number on the screen we'll send it to you whether by one or twos or by all of them or you want them but we believe it to be very resourceful for teaching others the word of God, the word of the kingdom, and also using in your own ministry to edify the saints. We put it, it's free. That's not of any cost to you right now. And I encourage you to grab it while you can. Praise God. It will be a great booster to your faith and to the faith of others who want to build their faith in the Lord. And I believe it will be a powerful tool to use as you ask the Holy Spirit to unveil the mysteries of the kingdom to you through the declared word. Amen. Praise God. You're blessed today. Hallelujah. Blessed to have you all here today. Praise God. And those who join us online, bless God for you too. Hallelujah. And we're here to celebrate the goodness of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And we added one more to the body here today. And we want you to welcome him. Praise God. So we'll call him now to come. And you're going to welcome him into the body increase in faith style praise god so come mr anderson stand here praise god hallelujah hallelujah oh, there the people there. stand here yes <laughs> praise god welcome to the family man of god Hallelujah. 
Stand here, Mr. Anderson. Stand here. They're coming to you. They're coming to you. Stand here. Yes, man. Let them come. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of I've been washed in I've been cleaned by Oh, I'm a joint here Yes, I travel I'm so glad Come on, child of God yeah, 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 I'm so glad yeah. Hey. I've been watched here I've been cleansed. Yeah, I'm a join here with Jesus as I travel along. I'm so glad. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Hey, I'm so glad. Ooh, of the family. I've been washed in and I've been cleansed by. Oh, I'm a joint here. Hey, as I travel, hey, I'm so glad. Hey, of the family. Hey, I'm so glad. Oh, Lord, of the family. I've been washed in this, and I've been cleansed. Join here. Hey, oh, as I travel. Alone. I'm so glad all of the family God yeah, yeah. welcome my son <laughs> blessing into the family man he's strong bless you thank you praise God good to have more in the house who are hearing the call and responding. And we encourage them to keep listening to the voice of the Lord and don't let others corrupt them from following who the Lord tell them to follow. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. You blessed today. Hallelujah. Well, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord have his countenance upon you. And give you his peace. God bless you. Good. Have a great day in the Lord. Bless you all. Praise God.